to another edition of Chess Chat, a program brought to you live from the Workers' Credit Union Studios at Fitchburg Access Television. I am George Marijanian, Program Director of the Wachusett Chess Club. This is a club which meets every Wednesday from 6 to 11 at the McKay Complex at the Fitchburg State University, which is currently celebrating its 125th anniversary. And with me today, for today's program, is our award-winning director, Darren Dame of Fitchburg. He's assisted in the control room by fellow resident and longtime Wachusett Chess Club member, Brian Bigelow. And across, sitting across from me is my uh, colleague, trusty co-host, chess writer, active tournament player, Dave Kucher of Westminster. Hello, Dave. Hello, George. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Well, Dave, before we present to our Chess Chan fans uh, uh, today's program, we want to actually thank uh, yes. uh, 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 someone who subbed for you. Uh, back in September. Months, back yep. in September. Who was this? I kept subsidy? meaning to thank Mike Camiso for, for filling in for me and doing a fantastic job. Yes, Mike so. Camiso, who's an active member of the Washington Chess Club, yep. sub substituted for you on that program. We thank Mike yeah, for doing thank, that. So thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. And we'll see Mike actually at the club. You know, every yep. Wednesday, we see him every Wednesday night. Yep. Well, Dave, today's program, we're going to talk about a tournament, a major tournament that was held in early December 2019, mm -hmm. it was actually December 8th, yep. it was the Harry Nelson Pillsbury Memorial Tournament. And uh, it, uh, well, before we get into who won it, yep. Harry Nelson Pillsbury was a, probably the most famous, in fact, without doubt, the most famous chess player, native born Massachusetts yep. player, yep. who, uh, is known around the world. That is, right. you, cannot, you cannot call yourself a serious chess player if you don't know the name Harry Nelson Pillsbury. Yeah. Okay, and we have a photo. We have a file photo of Harry Nelson Pillsbury. Here he is. He was born in 1872 in Somerville, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and he died at the age of 33. Tragically, at the age right. of 33 in uh, June, it was June 17, 1906. So, again, he is the most famous player known around the world by any serious chess player. This tournament that, we, that the Massachusetts Chess Association has been holding for years in his honor was held at the Westford Regency Inn mm -hmm. in Westford, Massachusetts, and it was won by international master Dennis Schmeloff. Yeah. Now, our director, Darren Dame, has a, a photo, a nice photo of uh, Dennis Schmeloff, who happens to be 33. He actually is currently oh, okay. 33. He's the same age that Pillsbury was when he died. But Dennis Schmeloff posted a perfect score. He won all his games, all four games in the tournament, yeah. in the uh, uh, Pillsbury Memorial Tournament. And uh, what else can we say about Dennis? Well, Dennis was born in Ukraine, mm -hmm. July 25th, 1986. At the age of 19, he came to this country with his mother and his stepfather. And you know where they settled, where they lived? No. In our neck of the woods, Pepperell. Oh, okay. I consider Pepperell part of yeah. our neck oh, of yeah. the woods. Sure. Yeah. So he, he, he actually grew up, uh, again, uh, well, I, I would say grew up, he was actually a teenager, late teenager, but he lived in, in, in Pepperell and is now living in Malden. Mm -hmm. But he is one of the strongest chess players in Massachusetts. Yeah. In fact, before winning the Pillsbury Memorial Tournament in Westford, a couple of months earlier, he, he tied for first with a Grandmaster Alexander Ivanov and one other player, I think it was uh, Brandon Wu, at the Greater Boston Open, held at the same hotel in Westford. Okay, now what, what, uh, what Shmeloff did when he came to this country at the age of 19, he enrolled at the University of Massachusetts in Lowell mm -hmm. and got a Bachelor's of Science degree in Economics and then went on to get a master's degree in mathematics and actuarial science okay. at the University of Connecticut in Storrs, Connecticut, mm -hmm. which, by the way, had a very strong chess club. Storrs, Connecticut, at one time, was, was a, a chess center in the state of Connecticut. But, but that is what uh, Schmel does. He's an, actu he's an actuary. He's yep. an insurance actuary. Yep. But he actually has, he's been, he's been, he's, he's been the Massachusetts State Champion. Right. He won it in 2008. 
That was two years after he played in his very first U.S. Chess Federation tournament, which was played at the Neshoba Chess Club in Westford. Now, that club okay. no longer exists. Mm -hmm. It's now defunct. But he, the three clubs that he's very active at, has played in, is the Metro West Chess Club in, in Natick, mm -hmm. which is probably the, the, one of the biggest, probably made the most, the biggest, the club actually that has the biggest turnout, weekend turnout of any club in the country. So that's in Natick, Metro West. He also plays at the Boston Chess Club, mm -hmm. which now meets in, in Cambridge, North Cambridge. But he also plays Friday nights mm -hmm. Uh, he's very active there in, 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 uh, at the Waltham Chess Club. Okay. So those are the three clubs that Denis Shmelov plays. Okay, so in this tournament that uh, he played in, uh, in uh, the Pillsbury tournament, it was 103 players, a very good turnover mm -hmm. for the tournament. He actually finished first, as I said, four, four straight wins. And we have a photo, Darren also has a photo of someone who he beat in this tournament. Oh, here's a photo of Dennis Schmeloff on the left, playing with the white pieces. And he is playing Grandmaster Alexander Ivanov, who's 63 years old, yep. the most active Grandmaster in Massachusetts. Right. He, he, among all the, the Grandmasters we have in the state, Alexander Ivanov plays more than any of them. It seems altogether. like pretty much every weekend. Every weekend you'll see Alexander Ivanov. And he's a many times state champion. Yeah, four, champion. in fact, he's won the Masters State Championship, the Mas Masters Open, 14 times. Yeah. Now, he doesn't hold the record because you know who holds the record for the most number of Masters Open wins? I'm guessing it would be Curdo. John Curdo yeah. of Auburn, Massachusetts, has won it uh, 17 times. Mm -hmm. So if he can actually, if Ivanov can win it four more times, he's, yep. he's, he's, he's established a new record. Now, so that photo of uh, Shmelov there and Ivanov was taken, that was played in the final round. Shmelov had to defeat Ivanov to win the tournament, mm -hmm. and he did it with four straight wins. Yep. Now, we're going to present to our Chess Chat viewers a game played by Ivanov, mm -hmm. because all of Denis Shmelov's games were long, yep. very long. Yep. And we don't have time yep. on this program to present any of Shmelov's. But we, we, we took one of the, 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 one of the best games from the tournament, uh, Alexei Ivanov, who had wh the white pieces against a national master, an 18-year-old player from Acton mm -hmm. by the name of Nithin Kavi. Mm -hmm. Nithin Kavi, this is round three. And we're going to present that right now to our viewers with uh, with our, our comments. Yep. Uh, so uh, so Nithin, uh, Ivanov had white. Ivanov had white. So what did he play as his first move in the uh, round three of the Pillsbury World? E4 was his first move. Okay, a very good opening move. Always very good, common. Yep. Very common, and and and, and uh, uh, always recommend to start the game with a uh, uh, central pawn. Central pawn. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, Kavi replied with c5. Now, what is this? We've, we've, we've played this before. Yeah, this is a Sicilian defense. Okay, one of the most popular defenses against anyone opening right. up with the party. Right, balance is the position, so it's right. It, you know, yes. it was a fighting defense. It's, it is a fighting defense, yep. actually. So, how did uh, Ivanov continue? He plays knight to f3 on his second move to control, mainly to control that square, d4. All right. Okay. Now, of course, Black has different choices. Lots but of choices. Lots yeah. of choices here. But, he, but what uh, Kavi chose was d6, plays the pawn up to d6, which now common. actually op yep. opens up, actually, for the light squared bishop to come out. Right. Possibly. Uh, but uh, now, what did uh, Ivanov do on move three? He plays d4. He puts the other pawn in the center. OK. So we see it actually on our, on our, our, on our monitor here, yep. d4 being played. All right. So. Black, in response to that, captures the pawn on d4. Right. So the c pawn takes d4. C takes d4 is Black's move. And how does Ivanov respond to that? He plays knight takes d4. OK. So now Black has two central pawns. White only has the one. All right. All right, so here's what uh, Kavi did. Um, this is now move four. He plays knight on g8 to f6. Knight f6 attacks the pawn on e4. Mm -hmm. Okay, how does uh, Ivanov respond? Ivanov guards the pawn by developing the knight to c3. All right. All right, now black plays a6, pawn, moves the pawn to a6. Now we have reached a position which actually is, is, is designates 
the name of the of, of this variation. We have a variation now. Yep. We we started this is we started with the Sicilian defense. Sicilian, yep. But now what is the name of this variation the black is playing now? Uh, this is the Nidorf. Yes, the Nidorf variation, which is named after a Polish born Argentinian grandmaster by the name of Miguel Nidorf. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is known around the world as the Nidorf variation. Right, and it's very, very common. Yes, it is. In fact, Bobby Fischer. When Bobby Fischer, who would play the, the Sicilian defense, this was the defense, the variation he would play, the Nidorf yep. variation. Mm -hmm. You'll find many, many games by right. Bobby Fischer where he played this. Okay, now, before we play uh, uh, White's ne Ivanov's next move, mm -hmm. can we tell our viewers, or even show our viewers, what po possible moves are now uh, playable in there, this position? There's, there's a lot. I okay, mean, what, is the, what, what is the main, what is usually the main continuation here? Th this is a big one, bishop to g5. Yes, that would be, that's, that's a really a major continuation. Bishop g5, attack in the knight. But also bishop e3 gets played. Yes. Bishop e2, bishop c4 with gets Bobby played. By the way, bishop c4 is with Bobby Fisher. Fisher. Okay. When he had the white pieces okay. and, f and faced this, this is what Bobby Fisher liked, bishop c4. And then also, sometimes white just starts attacking immediately with f4. Yeah, that's possible sometimes too. Sometimes he plays f3 and castles queenside. Yeah, so there's all kinds of possibilities right. here. The game now, can branch out a lot of different ways now. But what Ivanov chose, okay, what Ivanov chose is what? What did he play? He plays h3, which at the highest level is becoming a fairly common move. It is, it is, yeah. And you know who actually introduced this move into tournament play? Who that? Who that was be? Weaver Adams. Weaver Adams was a four-time Massachusetts State Champion mm -hmm. back in the late uh, 30s, early 40s. He, he played this for the first time in 1948 at the U.S. Open in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. He won the tournament, by the way, but he played this and this was the first appearance of this H3. It's an odd-looking yeah. move, right? But uh, but there's a reason behind it. Actually, it is prepare preparing G4. G4, yeah. exactly. All right. So what did Kabi do in response to H3? Well, what he did was play E5 and attack the knight on right. D4. Okay. So what did the, that knight has so to knight move? Knight has to move, so he brings it back to E2. Okay, so he goes and blocks the bishop. Blocks his own but that bishop, knight, but, but that knight's going to be redeployed somehow. Right. Uh, okay, so after knight de2, here is what... Now, because the plan is to play g4, white would love to play g4, right, right. black stops that by playing h5. Right. So that's what Kavi does. Yep. h5 will stop g4. Okay, what does Ivanov do now? Now he plays what we said was a common move. Bishop g5. Pinning the knight. Pinning the knight. Okay, bishop g5 pins the knight. So uh, 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 Kavi develops another piece. Well, this light squared bishop goes to e6. Yeah. Bishop e6. He, he could have played the bishop to e7, defending the knight with the bishop, but this is also a playable move. Yeah. Bishop e6. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. So how does white continue? Uh, he plays bishop takes f6, takes the knight. Okay. F6. And how was Black going to recapture? Well, what Kavi did, he didn't want to take with the pawn right. and have double pawns, which is weakens open, the yeah, side. Open up his king side. So he chose, he took, queen takes f6, yep. he captures that bishop with the queen, and now what does white do? Now Ivanov plays knight to d5, attacking the queen. So that's the attack. He actually, yep. The major threat is attacking the queen, but he also has the secondary right. threat of coming into c7 fork, checking the king and, and winning the rook. Attacking the rook, yeah. So that queen has to save itself, but also threat, uh, uh, stop right. this knight going to c7. He could, he could potentially, could've, yeah. could've Actually, he could've could have taken, the yep. bishop could have taken the knight yep. with, with, uh, on d5, but Akavi brings the queen back to d8 to uh, protect that square on c7. All yep. right, what does white do now? White plays queen d3. Okay. Preparing to castle on the queen side. Okay, so with the queen on d3, uh, black now plays the knight on b8 to d7. Knight d7 is what he plays. Yep. All right, and we see that being played. All right, what does uh, Ivanov do now? Ivanov on his 12th move, castles queen side. Right, now he's way ahead of development. I mean, he's got, he's got his cast, he's cast two pieces, and all yeah. black has is just cast, he's got just two pieces developed. Yeah. Okay. What does black do after white castles? Well, black plays g6. He's going to 
looks like he's going to make it possible for that bishop to be redeployed on, 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 on the G7. Right. Okay, what does White do now? What does Ivanov do now? Now well, he plays King B1. And that's common, you know. Uh, it's very common, yeah. You'll see it when, when, when White castles queenside, you'll see it very common to play the king over to B1, possibly to add further, if, this, if, if, it were, if there were pressure on this pawn on C2, it allows right, actually. Which he could, you know, by playing the yes, rook over. Ring over, right. So again. And also, you know, def also, defends yes, actually, his pawn. True, actually, probably the major reason. That pawn's is not defended right, right now. Right, right, so it does add defense to that pawn on yep. A2. All right, so King B1 was played, but now black plays knight C5, which attacks the queen. Right. Okay, queen has to move. Queen has to move. Where's it gonna go? Lots of choices, but he goes queen f3. All right, queen f3. All right. Oh, and now look, look at the he's threat. Continuing, what? He's continuing to, you know, yeah. the, the knight's also attacking the pawn. And he, has, so and he also defend, he has to defend the pawn. Yeah. But look at the threat that white has here. Isn't there a threat of the knight sinking here with check? Yeah. Forcing the king to move, and that right. would forfeit castling. Yeah, that would be so horrible. So yeah. I don't think black wants that knight to sink in right. to f6 with check. So that's why black now played bishop g7. Which, uh, I mean, the check, no, he, he, he it, it adds actually con fighting for control of this uh, square F6. I mean, con it controls it. Right. Yeah, he can't, that knight can't sink into F6. That stops the right. knight from going to F6. Okay, it's so White's move, Ivanov's move, what does he do? Ivanov's move, he plays a move that's not in the database no, that I was looking at. There's there's ten games where the knight go yes the knight, knight goes here to allow to allow the bishop, the bishop to come out up here but Ivanov plays g3. This is a novelty. Yeah. So you, as far as you I say can you tell. do not find this move nope. played by anybody. No. Nope. So this is the first time uh, Ivanov is coming up with a new move, mm -hmm. a novelty. Okay. After g3, you know where, where White has castle on the king side. Queen and, side. Uh, I'm sorry, queen side. Yep. Black's play is on the queen side. Right. Where white's play is going to be on the king side. So what black does is advance the pawn to b5. So yep. he starts the, the advancement of, of, of the pawn on b, uh, to b7 to b5. Okay. And this, and this happens a lot in the Sicilian, where yes. white castles queen side, black castles king side. And, it's first come, first serve. And they both attack Who's at ever, the same yes. time. Yep. Who, Whose who's attack will be faster? Yep. Okay, so what does uh, Ivanov do now? Ivanov plays 17, queen e3. All right. Oh, so it looks like he's getting out of, look, it looks like the plan is to probably advance that F pawn. This F pawn, right. But the F, the queen being on F3. Uh, was blocking. Blocking yep. it, so he moves it. So now, uh, Kavi advances the pawn to B4. Right. So he's actually, that's where his play is, queen right. side. He's attacking. Attacking. And All right, so what does uh, Bla White do? Ivanov starts his attack on the king side with F4. F4, okay. So, what uh, Black does is play this knight on c5 to a4. Yep. Okay, okay, so he's here, and of course, uh, well, there's also, no, he's he, he, okay, he's here, he's, he, he's better off here. Yeah. Okay, what does white do now after knight a4? And he continues his attack, pushing the pawn to f5. All right, so f5. So now this bishop's attacked. Okay, now what, Black should have done in this position, mm -hmm. according to analysis done by uh, by compute by mm -hmm. Stockfish is the name yep. of the system, yep. was recommending the bishop should have gone to h6, attack the queen, attack the queen, queen right, and force yep. the queen to move, right, right, and then, you know one possibility is the queen, you know, if the queen came here, yeah, then the knight could drop back, attacking it, allow that to, yeah, right, and then actually attack also be attacking the the pawn right. e4 at the same time. Right. All right, but but this is what Black did not play. Right. He did not play the bishop to h6. Instead, he took the pawn on f5. He took it with the g-pawn. G yep. takes f5. Right. So he captured there, g takes f5. And of course, I Ivanov, he, well, he took back. I mean, right, just it, recaptured, he takes f5. Okay. Now here's where the greed factor comes in. Yeah. A lot of players I w would actually would actually recapture the pawn and be winning a pawn. In fact, that's what he did. I, that's what he did. What he should have done, what, what the computers had recommended, is he should have actually, they should he not have eliminated this knight Take on the knight. d5, bishop takes d5? Take, he didn't and, do it. Yeah, attack. Yes, it would, attack have atta the rook. it would have attacked the rook, exactly. But 
and of course, the rook would have recaptured here to, to stop that. All but, right, right. Yeah, but but bishop takes f5 is what Kavi played. He now puts him a pawn ahead. Materially, he's ahead, but this is now the, the tables have turned. Yeah. Even though he's a pawn ahead, his position is worse as a result of this pawn ahead. Is it not? Yeah, so you sort of wonder if he, if he missed, you know, knight to d4. Yes. It's easy to see how you yes. could miss that, right? Because here, yeah. Yeah. When, when the pawn's here, yes, right. there's no pin right now. Right. But, but, but after now the what, capture, yes. now when the knight goes here, now this pawn is Right, pinned. the pawn cannot take the knight because of the pin, and the knight has the threat of attacking the bishop, but also the threat of coming here. Right. Yeah. And, uh, oh, you know what? So he's, he, by, the, by virtue of the fact that he hasn't cast You know what we miss? We miss actually what? some moves earlier. Did we? The, yes. Bishop, the bishop actually, we, actually earlier, the bishop had moved to g2, so we missed actually move 16. Oh, and yeah. Rook. yeah. So yeah. we missed this move, this continuation. Yep. Hopefully our readers will, uh, will <laughs> accept our, our, our mission. But this is the actual position. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, but, but let's continue. This is actually move... What is this move? 21, right 21, now? 21, right. Okay, so this is the actual position. Except our word for it, this is actually yes. the position on the board. All right, so now there is the threat of the, the, the knight. The bishop is attacking the knight. Right. The knight, the bit, knight is also threatening to come here and forking right. the queen and the rook. Yeah. Okay, so. So this, <sighs> this points out that, you know, there's the motto, the castle early. Yes. Uh, which, uh, which, uh, which Black hasn't done, and by virtue of that, he, now this pawn is pinned. Right. So what he, what, so what, what Black does is bring the bishop back to d7. Right. Which stops the knight from coming here and forking the queen and the rook. Okay. All right. So this is the actual position on the right. board, and the, what does he do after the, at that? So rook h f1. Yeah, because the rook has no f no future staying on on h1. Right. Anytime you're given the opportunity to seize a file, especially an open file or a semi-open file right. like this one, yep. seize it. Put a rook on, on a uh, open or semi-open file, yep. and that's what Ivanov did. Yep. So with the rook on f1, he castles. It took him 22 moves, yep. but it's a little too late. He's actually uh, in trouble. He's in trouble right now. Right. He's got to be. Uh, he's got. He's on the defense. Uh, uh, defensive. All right, so what does uh, Ivanov do now? He continues the attack, knight f5, and what, uh, yes. attacking the, the he's bishop. Atta he's attacking the bishop. He's on, there's also a pawn that's also mm -hmm. undefended here. Yep. So, so what, uh, what uh, Kabi does, get rid of that knight. Yep. Bishop takes the knight on f5, okay, that's gone. And uh, Ivanov recaptures. Recaptures, now the rook is, is coming in here. Right, okay. Yeah, threatening that pawn. Yeah, that pawn is under Threatening to bring this rook behind it. And okay, so what uh, uh, Black does here, he advances this pawn. He says, you know what, I'm gonna advance this pawn to e4 because this now uncovers a, an attack. Right. Now we have the bishop and the knight attacking the pawn on b2. Right. Okay, so what does uh, I I Ivanov do Ivanov in response ignores to that? He ignores that. He ignores his attack with df1. He's not concerned about that pawn on right. d2. Right. He's now piling up pressure on the f file with exactly. doubling the rooks. Yep. Okay, so with the rook at the, on f1, this now he, now Black says, okay, I'm gonna bring the rook up the, the b5, pinning, pinning this knight for one thing. But also possible. Well, oh, he's attacking it. He's attacking. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's it right. Is, he's, it is defended. It's right. defended, right? Exactly. So, uh, so what does uh, Ivanov do now after that? Oh, he ta takes yeah. e4. Just simply takes guarding it. Guarding it a second time. Okay. So after Bishop takes e4, well, uh, Black takes the pawn on b2 with the knight. Yep. So he's he's got that pawn back. What's the pawn situation? Four pawns. He's still a pawn ahead. Black is still ahead. got one pawn ahead. Right. Although this is pawn is, is it can be taken by White and right. so that he could actually uh, be equal in pawns. But Vanov now plays what after that knight. Knight f6. Oh, check. Check. Okay, check. Now, on this check, this king cannot move. The only move the king can make was over here because this would be a big mistake, would it not, to move over sure. here? Sure, yeah. Because the rook would just simply take check. Rook, rook yeah. takes. And it, it would, yeah, it would lead to mate. This would leads, actually... Leads quickly to mate, mate. Right. This would lead to mate. So he, he eliminates that knight. Yep. Bishop takes f6, so that knight's gone. 
And Ivanov does what? He brings the queen in. Yes. Instead, he could have taken to the bishop, but this is a stronger... He comes up with a stronger move. Right. Queen to h6 is a much stronger move, okay? So what he, uh, Kavi does, he brings the rook over here to e6 and attacks the undefended bishop. Right. But that doesn't help him, does it? Because what does Ivanov do? Ivanov plays rook g5 check. Okay. And that bishop has to take the because right. the king cannot the king, move king's got nowhere to move okay so he, so he, Akavi just takes bishop takes the rook on g5 he's he's uh, uh, sacrificing the rook here yeah. but the whole purpose of this this rook g5 check sacrificing the exchange is for uh, Ivanov to play the next move yeah I mean, he actually has a choice here right i mean he he could even this this would win. Oh yes, queen, there, yes. Queen h7 would have won. So uh, there's actually a force mate. If he did it that way, he could have done mate in two. But the, right. If, if he had gone here immediately, right. Check. Yeah. In fact, he misses. Actually, isn't the shortest. In fact, yeah, the way be, he did it, he actually prolonged the actual possible mate. Right. This was actually quicker. King here, king over here, and, and, and queen and takes the queen, mate. or even the rook is mate all. Yeah, he could right. take with the rook. Yep. But he chose to do it this way. Bishop. Right. Rook, check. I mean, bishop, check. Yep. And, of course, the, uh, he resigned here. Why did he right. resign? Because the king would be forced to go to h8. Right. The bishop would go back to g6, discovered check. Right. King is forced to go to g8. The queen comes. Well, can actually, this, this or even, yes. Is this, this mate here? I think that's, that's mate, too. Yeah, why, why fool around? Mate, yeah. That's mate. So there, yeah. there, were fast, there were fast mates here, yep. either way. So that's why he resigned. So this was a game that actually uh, was played in the third round. Ivanov went on to play Shmelov in the final, the final round, round yeah. uh, and lost, mm -hmm. making it possible for Denis Shmelov you know, to, uh, to win the tournament. Now, now Shmelov, would he be like grandmaster level if he played international tournaments? Could Yeah, well, he, let me tell you something about Denis Shmelov. In 2011, he, he got his first Grandmaster Norm. He needs okay. actually three Grandmaster right. Norms. He played in a tournament in Berkeley, California. It was the okay. Berkeley International. Yep. So he got his Norm, his GM Norm, Grandmaster Norm. He's been an international master since 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, uh, so he needs to play in other tournaments where there are norms possible, right. uh, which our Carissa Yip is doing, by the way. She's now, she's now, she is now an international master. Right. And she's now working toward getting Grandmaster norms. Right. And Dennis who already has one Grandmaster norm, and he's working toward that. You know what, which is interesting, this Pillsbury uh, Memorial Tournament that the, uh, Shmelov won, did you know that he actually beat Ivanov in the 2016, uh -huh. no, 2018? Like yeah, I have it here, that he also played uh, 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 Ivanov in the Pillsbury Memorial in 2000. Uh, uh, it was a 16. Okay. 2016, the two same players, Ivanov and Shmelov played, uh, and uh, uh, Shmelov won that game. Okay. Yeah. But again, in this year's uh, tournament, Shmelov uh, uh, defeated uh, 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 Ivanov. We saw the photo that uh, Darren right. had shown earlier. Yeah. yeah. Now, actually, Dennis is known as Dennis the Menace of Chess in, in Massachusetts. I'll I mean, bet. That's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's his label here. But as I say, he's. Uh, he, and again, he, uh, what, what else can I say about that is, oh, you, I told you about the first term he played in, in the Shoba, I mm -hmm. mean, in the Shoba Chess Club. But he's now become very active. I, I, you know, because he was going to school back in 2006 and all that, he was inactive. So anyways, I hope our Chess Chess fans enjoyed the, the, the game that you and I presented mm -hmm. to, uh, to, our, to our fans. So we'll see you next time on Chess Chat.